Good evening, everyone. Uh, since the dormitories uh, have been declared cleared of COVID-19 on the 11th of uh, August, there are about 45 new cases of uh, COVID infections that have been detected amongst the cleared dormitories daily. Now, many of the dormitory residents are COVID naive. They have never been infected, so they continue to remain susceptible to COVID-19. However, we are prepared for this. We have put in place a multi-layered strategy to detect as well as to contain any new infections very quickly and very decisively. And um, obviously, the key thing is uh, prevention. So we put in place safe living, safe working, safe rest days. Um, these are measures that limit the intermixing of workers at the dormitories as well as work sites. And we also ensure that uh, workers who are unwell, they are isolated quickly and treated. And this helps to prevent the spread and formation of uh, large clusters. On top of that, we have also... Um, enacted various detection strategies, a number of um, them, to get workers first to self-monitor their own health. And we closely monitor those who report sick with acute respiratory illnesses. And we also conduct wastewater testing at selected dormitories as a means of early sentinel surveillance. And of course, the key sort of uh, hallmark of our strategy is this rostered routine testing, the RRT, which we do every 14 days for every dormitory resident and workers in all of the higher risk factors, the CMP, the construction, the marine and process. RRT is a key lever in our detection strategy as it is a comprehensive testing for every single dormitory worker every 14 days. And it's very definitive in identifying workers who are infected. Once these are identified and if they are found to be positive through our RRT itself, we quickly contain and isolate them. So we ring fence them, we contain the spread by testing and isolating the close contacts, and we also carry out very aggressive testing operations within the dormitory based on the assessment of the potential risk of spread. And these measures have enabled us to quickly isolate new cases at the dormitories as well as contain the spread of the virus. Now, just a bit on the numbers. In early August, we were able to get about 15% of the dormitory residents commencing RRT. As the numbers of workers continue, uh, undergoing this RRT rose, we saw an increase in new cases detected around the third week of August. As of today, majority of the workers, about 90%, have been scheduled for RRT, and we expect to hit 100% over the next few weeks. This is crucial, and this is critical, because it helps us to break the chain of transmission it reduces the number of infections subsequently, and we will continue our efforts to detect new cases early and to isolate them. Now, to date, we have successfully contained more than 200 re-emergent dormitory sites. For the majority of these sites, the number of re-emergent infections has been low. There are less than 10 each. And the re-emergent infection rate amongst those who have not been previously infected is low, at about 2%. Um, I wanted to give you a case study um, in terms of a dorm where swift containment isolation help us to curb the transmission and we work very closely with the dorm operator. I am not going to mention the name of these dorms because I don't want them to, to, to relax and, and rest on their laurels after we mention them, thinking that uh, you know, the, the, the fight is over. The fight is never over. We continue to be vigilant. So... At this particular dorm, the moment we detected a re-emergent infection at one of the blocks, we quarantined his close contacts, we conducted aggressive testing operations to arrest the spread of the virus. There was no transmission beyond the initial case, and we closed the re-emergent dormitory site. So, to, strengthen, to further strengthen our efforts in the prevention of new cases, we have also jointly worked with the uh, Ministry of Health uh, under the good office of Min Gan and uh, the team, uh, Professor Kenneth Mark, the new IPC framework. IPC stands for Infection Prevention and Control, IPC, right? So we, we have a lot of acronyms, so we, we, we need to remember them. Uh, this was developed to enhance our dormitory operators' knowledge, and also to standardize measures across all the dormitories. And it is in addition to a checklist that's used for self-assessment, dorm operators will be guided also by external independent assessors. They, they do an audit 
periodically and it's a very frequent audit to be and they are then e evaluated and IPC experts will conduct their independent professional review. So moving forward, we will also work with MOH closely to develop, to curate health education, public health education and training curriculum, including basic infection prevention and control for migrant workers. And we will partner stakeholders such as Health Promotion Board, the NGOs, as well as consider the use of technology to reach out, to educate and to train workers. As I've alluded to using technology, we are now going to go further upstream to predict and also prevent new cases, such as piloting wearable contact tracing technology at selected dormitories. That's why uh, Minister Vivian is here as well to support us. We hope to adopt these tokens uh, fairly quickly in the form of uh, uh, first a pilot. This will greatly increase the speed and precision of contact tracing it will also allow for more targeted containment and quarantine. And quite a number of uh, suitable dormitories have already been identified and we are now working on operationalizing it uh, sometime in early October. Now, I want to emphasize that we need the cooperation of all stakeholders. We need the dorm operators, we need the employers, and we need the migrant workers to work together with us to what they say in Chinese, to pay her woman, right? So that we can provide a safe working and living environment for workers to minimize the risk of COVID-19 outbreaks, right? This is a huge, this is a collective effort. I urge all of you to work with us, right? Um, just one example of a, a great partnership with another dorm operator. Again, I will not mention name in case uh, after that, uh, the moment I mention things get more relaxed. I think there are some slides that I can show you to show you how the, some of these safe living measures uh, have resulted in improved uh, um, sort of uh, uh, safe distancing and, and also um, to ensure that there's no intermixing and we've been able to bring down uh, uh, transmissions to, to a very, very minimal number in this dorm. All right? So you can see that fences were erected to completely separate the blocks at the dorms to prevent mixing. If you look at communal facilities such as cooking areas, canteen, they were also fenced up so that they could be split and allocated uh, to different sections. And we actually even allocate dedicated time slots as well as separate routes of entry and exit for and after work. And we have round-the-clock security officers to enforce strictly safe living measures and fire safety. On top of that, we also uh, got safe distancing officers to chaperone workers to work uh, as well as when they come back. All of this help, and they help a far, uh, and they go a long way. Uh, in any sort of uh, re-emergent case, it would be easier to more sharply differentiate between the affected and the unaffected areas. So, thank you very much um, uh, for, your, for your attention. I hope that this message gets, gets out to everyone. Thank you.